Welcome to Forward Life Church online service. We are so glad you decided to join us today. If you missed any of our previous services, please go to our Facebook page or our YouTube channel to watch. Also, hit the like button on our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our services. Today, Pastor Rico will start a new series called Mixtape. You don't want to miss any of this exciting series. Once again, thanks for joining us today. Good morning, family. How's everybody doing? I'm excited to be with you for another series, man. This is going to be a series for me that I've been looking forward to doing for a while, man. For me, it really, really brings me back to a time in my life where I would do certain things to capture music, man. This is the mixtape series i want to welcome you to the mixtape series this is part one and we're going to carry this series on up to i believe somewhere around uh the second week of august so rock with me throughout this series i'm excited for it i'm excited to have you here for it and i want to get you in the mood for the things that we used to do back in the day in the summers. I don't know about anybody else, man. I used to make my own mixtape. And what we used to do is we used to listen to the radio. And whenever the DJ would let us know that after the commercial, he was going to play a particular song we wanted to hear, we would grab our cassette, hit record, and create our own mixtape. Man, I had so many cassettes with so many different songs on those cassettes that I can't even begin to tell you how many times I did that as a young person and as a kid, man. So I'm still feeling nostalgic about the summer and we're maintaining our summer theme even with this series, Mixtape. Listen, if you will, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that nothing is more like a mixtape when it comes down to scripture than psalms what the mixtape is to the culture the psalms are 
to the church. And so we're going to spend some time walking through the different Psalms in the Bible and we're going to use them as a backdrop for music and we're going to try to do this for the culture. Are you with me? Can I do that? Can I do this for the culture? I'm excited to have you here and I want you to know that this is going to be a great time in this particular series. Now, with, with, will you do me a favor? Turn with me to Psalm uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. And I want you to know that the reason why I'm using the psalm as a backdrop for this particular mixtape series is because Psalms are like mixtape. If you look at the book of Psalms, it's like a mixtape. There's different various orders. And basically what a mixtape is, it's the compilation of various artists uh, being used in music to give an overall sound for a particular tape. And so for me, Psalms are what a mixtape is uh, to the culture. Psalms Psalms are that to the church. And so the Psalms have different types of Psalms. There's lamenting Psalms. There's Psalms of thanksgiving. There's Psalms of praise. There are Psalms of reflection. There are Psalms of affirmation. And there are Psalms of wisdom. And so these various types of Psalms and various styles of Psalms create a mixtape that we call the book of Psalms. And David is the majority writer of the songs but there are other writers in the songs and so that makes the compilation of artists real for the song turn with me to psalm 1 chapter 1 through 3 and the reason why i said uh, psalm 1 verses 1 through 3 i'm sorry not chapter 1 through 3 because psalms don't have chapters you have to understand that Psalms are single individual prayers, songs, and hymns that were used for through people, written by people, to encourage other people and themselves during different different times and different time periods. And so Psalms, the book of Psalms, isn't necessarily a book of chapters, it's a book of divisions. There's five divisions of Psalms. And so when you go to a psalm is not psalm chapter one or psalm chapter two it's just psalm one psalm two psalm three because they were not initially created for the purpose of being in a book they had to be set up as divisions and we talked about this in our um our uh, not mentorship but our um discipleship class we talked about that Wednesday night that Ezra helped complete the compilation of the books of the Old Testament canon and part of that assignment were the Psalms okay so Psalm chapter 1 verse um, Psalm 1 I'm sorry Psalm 1 verses 1 through 3 man I'm talking all over the place Psalm 1 verses 1 through 3 can't you tell I'm excited Psalm 1 verses 1 through 3 it says Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. I'm reading from the NIV, by the way. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree. By streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. I'm going to read that again. This is the NIV version. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates in his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaves does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. I want to take my thought from portions of verses 1 and 3 in which verse 1 says, Blessed is the one and in verse 3 it says that person is like a tree planted by streams of water.
Blessed is the one and that person. Blessed is the one and that person. Blessed is the one and that person. That's the thought that I want to work with today. And since we're in Psalm 1 and we're talking about music, I want to speak from the subject of my debut single. <laughs> I want to speak from the subject of my debut single man this is my debut single I want you to understand that this is your debut single we're talking about music we're in Psalm 1 and this is the debut single of this particular mixtape when a song debuts the hope of those who put work into it is that it comes across as a hit it has to because whatever song an artist chooses to be their single, especially a debut single, could wind up being the only hit they ever have. Did you hear what I said? And plenty of artists have debuted a single, and if it was the only hit on the album, then that means that album bombed. And I want you to understand that I can remember back in the day before streaming music was a thing, some albums, cassettes, and CDs would only have one song I liked on the entire album. Do y'all remember that one song, that, that one single, that, that one hit that came out was the only thing on that album that was worth purchasing that album for. It was the only thing that was a banger. It was the only thing that was bumping. It was the only thing that I could play and I would play it on repeat over and over because that was the only thing on the album. Everything else was alright or everything else was trash. I, I, I could only relate late to that one particular song and so now I'm stuck with this thing on repeat I'm stuck with it oh my god the cassette tape might unravel or or the CD might end up getting scratched because I just replete, repeated it and played it over and over again and so you were screwed if you bought the whole album off of one song then the music industry got smart and just started selling singles. They, they realized, listen, we can make money off of the single and the album. In other words, this was brilliant because what they did was create a buzz about the album while allowing themselves to make money in the process on the smaller unit before releasing the bigger unit and so with that in mind the debut single had to be a banger it, it had to be something that would grab people's attention it had to be something that people could relate to it had to be something that people would be able to dance off of or, or be able to remember the beat had to be catchy or the lyrics had to be catchy there had to be something in that day debut single that caught people's attention and my God it had to set the expectations of the rest of the album and when we look at someone it's the debut single of what we can expect the rest of Psalms to be it's a banger. It, it, it has the elements of hit all through it. You, you can see the elements of how this particular mixtape of song must be good. It, it must be a banger. The lyrics must be right. My God, it sets the tone for the songs that we, that, and lets us know what the songs are really about. It has the right tone. It, it has the right tempo. It has the right pitch. And in my opinion, this is how you want to introduce your music to your potential fan base. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Someone is mellifluous. It, it's not dark. It's not flat. 
It's properly syncopated, meaning that everything in it is properly harmonized. It, it has every all the elements of hit all over it. it. It seems to be the type of song, the type of music that, that I would love. It's the type of music that will make you want to dance. It's the type of music that draws your ears in. It's the good music to your ears. It, it's the type of sound that you want to hear. Why? Because you end up clapping along to it you end up singing along to it it's the right type of music and the right type of sound it comes off the right way it opens up the right way it, it introduces the artist the right way I, I like someone because it's the type of music that makes me want to dance it, it's the type of music that makes me want to shout it, it's the type of music I want to hear playing over and over in my ears and in my mind and in my spare time because it opens up talking about how blessed I am and from the onset the psalm draws you in through the affirmation that blessed is the one <laughs> I like that that blessed is the one and the psalmist opens up this compilation of music with an affirmation because it's God's desire for you to know that you are affirmed. Did you hear what I said? It's God's desire for you to know that you are are affirmed. God is saying, I don't mind other people affirming you, but I need you to know that you're going to hear affirmation from me quite often. You, you're going to hear affirmation from anything that I produce. You, you're going to hear affirmation from any type of music that I put out there. I don't mind other people affirming you. I don't mind other people encouraging you, but I want you to know that you're going to always be affirmed by me. You're going to always be encouraged by me. You're going to always be lifted up by me. I'm not going to let anybody else out uh, affirm you that like me. I'm not going to let anybody else out affirm you, out affirm me, uh, my God, when it comes down to you. I'm not going to let anybody else out lift you up when it comes down to you. I'm going to make sure that I'm the primary focus of your affirmation. I'm going to make sure that I'm the primary focus of your lifting. I'm going to make sure that I'm the primary focus of your encouragement. I need you to understand that I don't mind other people lifting you up, but when you come to my book and when you come to my music, and when you listen to my mixtape, you're going to always be affirmed. Blessed is the one. And this means that we don't, we shouldn't listen, watch this, to any music that doesn't affirm who God says we are. Did you hear what I said? We shouldn't listen to any music that doesn't affirm who God says we are. And I know we're living in a time where some of the music being played is degrading. Communities are being demoralized by music. Young men are being criminalized by music. Young women are being sexualized by music. And what that has to help us to understand is that if God's music in Psalm 1 affirms, then that's the type of music we need to play often in our minds. I'm, I'm here to tell you that God will not bombard you with offensive and obscene sounds. God wants the sound that comes through your ears to lift you up. God wants the sound that comes through your ears to encourage you. God wants the songs that you get from him to let you know that all things are possible in him. That in him that there's nothing impossible that you can make it with him that you can live through him that you can have your being through him that you can have your very existence through him and God says that the best sounds are the sounds that lets you know that your life has possibility and potential and I don't know about anyone else 
But I don't need to be told how bad my life is. I already know how bad my life is. I, I already know that I should be a statistic. I, I already know that I shouldn't have made it out of the hood. I, I already know that I should have died at a certain age. I, I already know that, uh, my God, that crack was real. I already know that prostitution was real. I already know that womanizing was real. I already know that abuse was real. I don't need to hear that over and over in my ear. I don't need to hear that over and over in my sound. I need a new sound. I need a sound that lifts me up. I need a sound that encourages me. I need a sound that pulls me through. I need a sound that lets me know that you weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I need a sound that helps me to understand that what's going to happen next is that the sound will pull me out of what I'm in and into something greater oh my god I need a sound that gives me hope I, I need a sound that lets me know I have a future I, I need a sound that gives me joy I, I need a sound that gives me peace I, I need a sound that gives me joy unspeakable and full of glory I need a sound and away with the music that monetizes the pain of our communities Away with the music that glamorizes our less than better selves. We, we need a sound that makes us want to create a better life for ourselves. We, we need a sound that gets us up in the morning. We, we need a sound that helps us to go forward no matter how crazy it is. We need a sound, my God, that pulls us out of danger. We need a sound that pulls us out of trouble. We need a sound that pulls us out of despair. We need a sound that straightens up our lives. We need a sound that gives us hope. We need a sound that gives us joy. We need a sound that gives us peace. I don't need a sound that criminalizes my life and makes me feel like I don't have a future and the way Psalm 1 opens it lets us know we're blessed it, it lets us know we're blessed and, and, and if I can help you to understand something that by the way the, the psalm opens it tells us that the rest of the album must be good mm -hmm. the rest of the album must be a banger the, the rest of the album must be good the, the rest of the mixtape must be worth buying the, the rest of the mixtape mix mix must be worth listening to uh, that's my kind of music Music. That's my kind of sound. And the interesting thing about Psalm 1 is it's open-ended in how it's written. I need you to catch this. Psalm 1 is open-ended in how it's written. In other words, it's not limited by any particular gender ethnicity, geographical location, socioeconomic status, or any other particular people group. This is why I chose the NIV version because it communicates the ecumenical nature of Psalm 1 best. Most Psalms have what are called superscripts. A superscript is a little heading at the top of the psalm telling you something about it. Superscripts tell you about the music or performance. They tell you about the writer and the reason for the song. However, Psalm 1 and 2 lack a superscript. Psalm 1 and 2 doesn't have any of that. However, watch this. Unlike Psalm 1, Psalm 2 has been identified as belonging to a particular psalm category. It's considered to be a royal psalm because it addresses kings. The addressing of kings means that although Psalm 2 doesn't have a superscript like Psalm 1, is not open-ended like Psalm 1. And Psalm 1 is ecumenical. It's ecumenical prose adds to the notion 
that the psalm stands by itself. In other words, Psalm 1 is truly a real single. <laughs> psalm 1 is in a class all by itself. And so the question becomes, what do we do with Psalm 1? And, and what was the intention of its author? And for the most part, it seems to be a hymn. Psalm 1 seems to be a hymn, but without a superscript, catch this, we don't know what type of music the composer had in mind for this particular song. <laughs> he gave us lyrics, but since it's an open-ended psalm, it appears to, to me that the music part is on us. Oh my God, did you hear what I said? He gave us lyrics. But because there's no superscript telling us what type of music or what type of instruments are involved with this particular psalm, it appears to me that he's leaving the music up to the reader. And this leads to another question. What sound do you want to add to this song? Did you hear what I said? <laughs> what sound do you want to add to this song? And do you want to rap the song? Do you want to jazz up the song? Do you want to R&B the song? Maybe you're a classical music person and you would classical music compose this particular song. I don't know. But what I do know is, watch this, God is saying, in this season, I'm going to give you the words to your own sound. Woo! Did you hear what I said? In this season, God is saying, I'm going to give you the words to your own sound. He's going to give you what to say, but you're going to have to say it on how you want to say it. He's going to give you what to say, but how you say it is going to be all up on you. It's going to be left up to you. All you're going to have to do is create the rhythmic pattern so you and God can make music together. How about that? God is saying that in this season we going to make music together. I'm going to create the lyrics and you going to create the sound. And God is trying to do more than just intellectually stimulate you. He's trying to cognitively leave his impression on you. He does this by establishing a rhythm with you. So every time you hear the music that you made with God, it'll remind you of him. And this is why we're taught our ABCs in a rhythmic pattern. I need you to catch this. It's not that we remembered our ABCs. We remembered the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And it's the rhythm that told us what alphabet went where and what alphabet was next. Mm -hmm. And God is like, when you make music with me, you will know who I am and you will know where I fit in your life. You will know who I am and you will know how I operate. You will know who I am and you will know where to place me. You will know who I am and you will know what I expect. You will know who I am and you will know how we work together. You will know who I am and you know how I move. You will know who I am and you know how I create. You will know who I am and you will know where I stay. Why? Because we've made music together and once we set up the rhythmic pattern, you will know where to find me and God is saying, find me in the rhythm. Find me in the music. Find me on your knees. Find me in prayer. Find me in your word. Find me in worship you will know the sound and you'll know where to find me by the sound of music we create and Psalm 1 isn't just a debut of the Psalms I need you to understand that Psalm 1 is your single debut. Uh, Psalm 1 is your debut as well. It's your debut single as well and, and God says watch this Get ready to be a part of the production of your sound. 
Get ready to be involved in the engineering of your sound and get ready for the cover art of your sound because we are about to do a debut together. We, we, I'm about to reintroduce you. I, I'm about to re, oh my God, imagine you. I'm about to set you in a place where folk ain't going to be able to recognize you. I'm about to set you in a place where people won't be able to understand how you made it. Oh my God, I'm going to do something different in your life. I'm going to take you into a place where you're going to sound different. I'm going to take you into a place where you're going to look different. I'm going to take you into a place where you're going to feel different. Get ready for your debut. Get ready for your single debut. Get ready for your coming out party. Get ready for your new door. Get ready for your introduction. Get ready for the way I'm about to re-enter your life and show people what I can do with a person who submitted to me and show people what I can do to with a person Person who surrendered to me. I'm going to get ready to reintroduce you. I'm going to give you a new sound. I'm going to give you a new look. And I'm going to give you a new feeling about yourself. It's your single debut. And because someone can't be characterized, I'm sorry, categorized like any other psalm, there are certain best practices for its interpretation. And, and we can use these best practices to get the meaning of this song. While preparing for this message, I read K. Arthur's book, How to Study Your Bible. I recommend it for you, K. Arthur, How to Study Your Bible. And in her book, she used Psalm 1 as an example of what is called synthetic and antithetic parallelism. And to begin, a synthetic parallelism is what Hebrew writers used to introduce new information on original concepts. So when we look at someone where the text says, blessed is the one, who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, the second and third lines amplify the first line. In other words, what the text is telling us is blessed people don't go along with wicked people. However, what amplifies this is they don't even accept the advice or model the standards of the wicked. Did you hear what I said? Blessed people don't just not go along with wicked people. They don't even accept their advice or model their standards. So what the text is telling us is, if you want to be blessed, don't follow the crowd. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? If you want to be blessed, don't follow the crowd. God told me to tell you, listen, that you're blessed by yourself. Did you hear what I said? Oh God, you're blessed by yourself. That don't mean that you don't need people. That don't mean that you can't rely on people. That don't mean that you need to act funny with people. But what that means is, is that if people come into your life, they better be adding or multiplying, but not subtracting. Did you hear me? When people come into your life, they better be adding or multiplying, but they show can't be dividing and subtracting. Did you hear what I said? You, you got to understand that you're blessed by yourself. You see, some of us can't handle seasons of being set apart to model a new way of life. What God is saying here is, if I'm going to debut you, you can't be like everybody else. There, there has to be something about you that's unique. There has to be something about you that's different. You're going to have to learn how to stand on your own. You're going to have to learn how to get rooted in some different things. You're going to have to learn that you can't take 
advice from the crowd and neither can you model the crowd because of where I'm taking you they can't advise you and where I'm taking you they can't give you an example of and too often ladies and gentlemen we give in to the need of needing to stay a part of the crowd because we're too nervous to step out on faith and trust God for a new sound. We're, we're too nervous to step out on faith and trust God for a new look. We're, we're too nervous to step out on faith and trust God uh, for a different approach to life. We're, we're too nervous to step out on faith and trust God for a different way to feel about ourselves. So we go along with the crowd. And what he's saying is, is that if you're going to be blessed, not only can you not go along with the crowd, but you can't take their advice and you can't model nothing that they're showing you because what they're showing you and what they're telling you don't line up with where I'm taking you watch what the text says it goes on to say you're blessed when you don't follow the crowd you're blessed when you don't take their advice you're blessed when you don't model their ways and because you don't follow the crowd, and because you don't take their advice, and because you don't model their ways, watch this, you've discovered a new delight. <laughs> watch what the text says. The text says, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. Here's what the Lord is saying. When he called you out to your debut single, people on the outside thought you were losing something when you stepped out from the crowd. They thought because you chose your peace over them that you would come back begging to be a part of what they was doing again. They, they thought that because you chose your assignment over them, that you would come back begging to be a part of what they were offering again. But God did, what he did was, he consecrated your life and showed you how to delight yourself in something new. <laughs> and can I tell you something and still be your friend? For those of you who feel like you're going through a season of isolation, it's really not to your detriment, it's to your delight. Mm, did you hear what I said? This season of isolation that you're going through, the season of loneliness that you're going through, the season of being without a crowd around you that you're going through is not to your detriment, it's to your delight. Because as you delight yourself, you're finding something new about your Yourself. As you delight yourself, you're finding something new about your God. As you're delighting yourself, you're growing. As you're delighting yourself, you're gaining. As you're delighting yourself, you're moving. As you're delighting yourself, you're catching a new sound. As you're delighting yourself, a new sound is coming out your mouth. As you're delighting yourself, a new sound is in your heart. As you're delighting yourself, new sound is in your ears. Oh my God, it's not to your detriment, it's to your delight. Oh, my God, I feel like preaching, but I got to get out of here because I'm boring y'all to death. <laughs> I need somebody to put it in the comments. I found my delight. I found my new delight. I found a new delight. I found a, a new thing. I don't need their affirmation anymore. I don't need their advice anymore. I don't need their dysfunction anymore. I found a new delight. Here it is, and I got to go. Another thing you will notice about the Psalms are the metaphors used by writers. The tree in Psalm 1 is of interest to me because of how the text reads. Listen to this. It says, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do 
prospers. I'm going to read that again. I like that part. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. And this is what's called an antithetic parallelism. <laughs> I love this, man. This is crazy to me. Oh, my God. This is an antithetic parallelism where the writer contrasts one idea against the other. Hmm. What do you mean by that? When we look at the tree in Psalm 1, the text explicitly states it was planted by streams of water, which means that it's not indigenous to the place it's in. Ooh, my God. God, this is good to me. I don't know about y'all, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. Look, we, we can put up scriptures on, 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 on social media or whatever, man. But if you, it ain't nothing like studying the thing for yourself. Here it is. Who is planted by streams of water, which means that it's not indigenous to the place it's in. Why is this important? Catch this. Because fruit trees don't always grow naturally by riverbanks. Oh my God, this is crazy. This means that though it's by water, catch this, this particular tree is in a place that's antithetical to its survival. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Can I tell you something? What God is doing for you in this season is placing you in places that people don't think you will ever grow in. God is saying, I'm going to place you in a place that's antithetical to what people think you should do to grow. Oh, yes, there's water there, but it's not indigenous to who you are. You finna be set up in a place to grow that people don't think you should be growing in. You finna be set up in a place to grow where people don't think there will be any production for you in there. There's some decisions that you're about to make. There's some opportunities that's about to come your way. There's some property that's about to come your way. There's some contracts that's about to come your way. There's some new doors that's about to open for you that people are going to say ain't no growth in there. That's not indigenous to who you are. That's not who you should be. It's not about your genetic code. It's not up to your makeup, but you are going to prosper in it because God says that I planted you there, and even though it's not indigenous to who you are, you still gonna bear some fruit. And here's another antithetic parallelism, oh my God, that I think is important. Notice that the text never tells us what kind of tree the writer is comparing the blessed person to. Ooh, this is good, man. This is good. The text never tells us what kind of tree the writer is comparing the blessed person to. It doesn't give us an indication of what the tree is. And some scholars have said that it doesn't matter but to me, it matters because if it were a palm tree, nobody would be shocked that a palm tree's leaves haven't withered by water. Why? Because a palm tree is indigenous to being near water. Mm. So when a person see a palm tree that's near water, that's thriving, it ain't going to get nobody's attention. <laughs> It has to be a tree that although it's by water, that although it's planted, that although it's in a place where it should be fruitful, that when people see it, they're going to be amazed that it's standing because of the type of tree it is. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that God is getting ready to debut your single. 
And when people see that you're still standing, and that when people see that you're still going, and that when people see that you're not only surviving, but you're thriving, and that when people see, my God, that the fruit that you're bearing is good, they're not only going to be shocked, they're going to be amazed. Oh, my God, they're going to be like, is that you with that new song? Is that you with that new style? Is that you with that new look? Is that you with that new dance? Is that you with that new look? Is that you with that new quote? Is that you with that new say? I don't know who that is, but I'm just here to tell you that he gave me, my God, some new song to sing. Oh, my God. He gave me a new dance to dance. He gave me new lyrics to say. I don't know about anybody else. I feel like preaching. And it's my time to be debuted. It's my time to be featured. It's my time to give my song. It's my time to produce in this season. It's my time to engineer in this season. It's my time to headline in this season. I'm here to tell you that it's your time. And God's getting ready to lift you up. God's getting ready to put a new song in your heart. God's getting ready to put new clapping in your hands. God's getting ready ready to put a new dance in your feet. It's your time to be debuted. It's your time to be featured. It's your time to be heard. It's your time to be seen. It's your time to be productive. It's your time to see the favor of God. It's your time to experience his goodness. It's your time to experience his blessing. It's your time to experience his favor. I don't know about anybody else but I'm getting ready to be debut I'm going to shout myself up in here ah oh God because I know that it's my debut single it's my time to be reintroduced and God's getting ready to bless me in a new way God's getting ready to favor me in a new way God's getting ready to bring me out in a new way it's my debut single Woo. let me get out of here man I ain't got nobody to shout me down man I'm ready for in person church man I don't care what nobody say <laughs> it's your debut single and because you're in a place where God planted you, people are going to be amazed by the fruit. Another antithetical parallelism we have to look at, when you go on and look at Psalm 1, it tells you what happens to those who don't trust God in their way. They end up in a bad way. I don't have time to go over it. You can go over it in your own devotional this week. They end up in a situation that's not for the believer. And I'm telling you, man, this mixtape series is going to be on fire. I feel the Holy Ghost all over it. I wasn't even expecting to go there with that today. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want you to pray with me now. Father, I thank you right now for your people. I thank you, Lord, for their debut single. I thank you, Lord, for their new sound. I thank you, Lord, for their new look. I thank you, Lord, for their new song. I thank you, Lord, for their new lyrics. I thank you, Father God, that you're going to bless them. I thank you, Father God, that you're going to make them fruitful. I thank you, Father God, that you're going to make them productive. I thank you, Father God, that you're going to show and reintroduce them to the world in a powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, no forward rewind until the fall. I'll see you next week.